My name is Kadambri Mattu and I am the academic head for Edolve, a global skills program brought to you by Access School. Now, most of you must have already heard about Adolf and also seen our introduction video. But for those who've missed it, I want to talk about it. Adolf is a completely hands-on, project-based global skills program. Each of our projects is carefully designed to work on specific skills, such as public speaking, creative novel writing, presentation, problem solving, oh, many more. And we're very proud to be the only outcome-based program in our country and to provide evidence of the transformation brought about in a child. This evidence is portrayed in the form of a digital portfolio, which is a personalized website, similar to what you can see here for each child to showcase their best work. Now, I've had the good fortune of being surrounded by native English speakers of a very high order, as well as studying elocution, speech and drama from an early age. And that's why I'm sharing my learning with you through this masterclass in pronunciation. Now, I'm trying to avoid jargon, but I can't promise it won't slip out. So if I do use it, I promise to explain it. Right? Okay, let's move on. English, beautiful language for poetry, literature. So what's all the fuss about? It's difficult for a foreign language learner. Imagine the, problem, the programs for teaching English. There's EFL, there is ESL, there is ESOL, there is FLE, and that's not even taking into account English for special purposes or English for academic purposes or business, the list goes on. So clearly, this is a very important field. But you'll be saying, why don't we need to do it here? After all, we have English medium schools. Most of us watch English or American movies. Um, but please understand, we are not going to be doing that today. We're not looking at American, Australian, African, Punjabi, South Indian, we are going to be doing English in an unaccented or neutral accent. Well, I call it neutral, but my friends say that I speak in British English or the Queen's English, often BBC English, Oxford, but now it's called Received Pronunciation or RP, right? To understand better, we have to remember, how is sound produced? What's involved? Well, obviously, air passes from the lungs, through the vocal cords, and out through the nose and the mouth. What affects it? The position of the tongue, the lips. Let's just try it together. Close your mouth and just breathe out. What sound comes out? Mm. It's coming out through your nose, isn't it? So even with your mouth closed, you can make a sound and that's going to be useful. So we'll be doing a lot of this practice and to get the best out of this session, don't be passive. I want you all to fully extend yourselves, follow my instructions, and everyone who does will go away enriched in not just how to say common or uncommon words, but also having extend, extended their spelling and vocabulary range. Now, I will issue a caveat or beware, right? A lot of people don't speak English because they think it will make them sound too posh or trying too hard. Um, well, correct English does sound a bit funny if everybody else is saying something else. A lot of people may not even understand you. That happens to me sometimes. But honestly, the real reason is they are simply poor listeners. Training is your voice isn't going to be easy because you've already got these established connections in your brain. But let's try, shall we? Right. 
I already told you my name. How many of you actually remember what I said? I want you to start testing your listening straight away. Remember, you have to be honest. And so we're going to try this polling out for the first time. What did you hear? Now you'll see three options on the screen. All right. What did you hear? They're actually written quite phonetically. And I'm not going to say it. Or maybe I should to help you for the first time. Did you hear Kadambri? Kadambri? Or Kadambri? I've been called all three. And let's not forget what people called me where I grew up. It was simply Cadbury. Easy, isn't it? I don't mind being called for a chocolate. All right. All right. So, um... I'm going to be giving you the results of that poll a little later, but let's make no mistake. It may be a medium of instruction, but it is a second language. So what we're taking on today is a real challenge because the topic is so vast. So I'm going to just take up a few topics which I know from experience people find challenging. So, hmm. Let's look at the objectives for the day. Odd behavior of vowels. That's A. We're going to start with A, all right? Another challenging word, um, sound, which is R. That's a consonant, as you already know, right? Then we're going to be looking at diphthongs, digraphs, O U G H C. Glide, that's a diphthong. Digraphs are simply because English, sorry to say, the script is, is limited, just 26 letters. So they have to make up new sounds and combinations. So a C and an H goes together and makes ch. That's called a digraph. Wish it was that simple. We're going to go forward and learn. Now, some common common homophones and homographs. Homophone, phone, words which sound the same but may not be spelt the same way. So what are homographs? Sounds complicated? It isn't. It's simply words that are written in the same way too and they may or may not sound the same. May or may not. That's the challenge. We'll look into that. And there's a this whole pronunciation of a whole lot of very troublesome words and I'm not even going into syllable stress for that you've got to wait for my next session and how many foreign words have actually infiltrated English we're going to be looking at some of those too and throughout the session today we're going to be testing ourselves all the time so there'll be plenty of polls like the last one all right okay here we go now Massage your face like that. Massage your face. All right. Get loose. And now we're going to start with a warm up exercise. It simply gets your lungs moving. And we're going to start with long and short sounds. Okay. And in between, you'll also be doing, um, well, what can I say? Ship and sheep. Do you remember what I said it was? It is nothing but a digraph. Okay. Right. So let's start. Ship, sheep, lip, leap, leap, pull, pool, full, fool, met, meet. Let's go on. Are you tired? One more. Red, read. All right. So at e o. Ooh, is that easy? It's all there in, in our Hindi one mala, isn't it? Ooh, ooh, ah, 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 all of that. I wish English had it. It would make it a lot easier. 
for foreign language learners. Now, there's always a problem. When do you say s and when do you say z? And it's confusing, I know. So let's try some of that, all right? And so you can get s, sibilant sound from the front. S. When you voice it, it becomes z, right? S, z. See where it's coming from, that sound. All right, so let's try it. Sip, zip. Sink, zinc. Trace, trays. Race, raise. Peace, bees. Rice, rise. And there's one that I'm not going to tell you, and that's coming up. And I'm not going to give you the slightest bit of hint. All right? Please look at the two words on your screen. Right? Which of these two words has the s sound? The first one, the second one, or neither of them? That's your hole number two. Okay? wonder if you got that right. Hmm. That should be simple enough. Shall I give you the answer? All right. Here's the answer. Look at the stopwatch. Okay. Five. Well, almost. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Just two words. Come on. It's lose z and loose. Loose. Could you hear the difference? Lose. Loose. Now, I did promise that I would put some words in there, but I would also explain what they are. Um, anyone who does chemistry knows that zinc, zinc is an element as opposed to a sink where you wash your hands, right? Um, children love tracing on their books. Race and raise. Raise, oh wow, that's a nasty word. Simply means full-scale destruction. During the war, they raised the village to the ground. Raise. Same as R-A-I-S-E, by the way, all right? And now finally, we've got to that difficult one, which I asked you, lose and loose. How do you use them differently, all right? Her dress was loose. She was swimming in it. Oh my gosh. You're going to lose your watch if you keep putting it away. Don't put it away like that. Be careful. Don't lose your watch. All right. Sounds a bit weird, but there you are. I hope you're feeling warmed up now. I think we've done quite a lot of practice of long and short vowels and S and Z sounds. Right. Should we go on now? Okay. My early years teachers are going to laugh because we're starting with the very first vowel sound, all right, that we teach our little kids uh, when we teach them phonics. Um, I don't want to confuse you with phonetic symbols, but A can be confused in so many ways for the unwary speaker. Okay, now I want you to look at that sentence on the board, okay? Oh. Now, this sentence has many, many A sounds in it, right? Um, well, it's up to you as to how many you think are different and how many are the same, right? I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, words which have an A in them. Okay, are they going to be the same or is it going to be different? Now, let's say it together. Listen to me once and then let's try it together. Mac was running around his rare stable 
with his tall coach when he received a note privately from his father. Your turn. Come on, say it again. Mac was running around his rare stable with his tall coach when he received a note privately from his father. Now we're going to take each sound of A separately. And unfortunately, there are seven sounds. I bet you didn't think that, but there are. Let's take the first one, Mac. Ah, simple ladies. This is the first one we teach kids. Apple, arrow, axe, ambulance. Easy. Mac, short, ax. Okay, then we get to the next one, which is a bit more troublesome because don't say around, please, just because that A is there. In fact, you've got to forget about that A quite a bit. So it'll be more of around. The emphasis is on round, not on the A. So it's around. Let's look at some more. About, again, analysis, assuming. All of these have what we call the schwa, which means a very unaccented A. Now let's get to the next one. I've had a lot of difficulty with my students um, who say rare. They don't say rare, all right? Rare, mare, bear, stare. And I can see some of my friends say, what's a mare? Well, it's nothing but a female horse, right? Everyone knows bear. Um, when he went to look for some food, his cupboard was bare. In other words, there was nothing there. It means something different when it's modeling. <laughs> right, so rare, mare, bear, stare. Where else? Hang on. Parents, not parents. Parents. I hope you've been saying this with me. Otherwise, there's not going to be much fun for you if you're just listening. Listening is important. Try it out. Now we come to the next um, A sound. A. Simply A. That's actually a diphthong, right? Um, a. Stable. Fable. Cable. Cradle. Enable. Oh, gosh. Everyone knows what a fable is, I'm sure. Oh, those lovely little animal stories which had a moral at the end, remember? Cable everyone knows. Cradle is where you put your baby and enable simply means to empower somebody to do something. Next we get to that awe sound. Tall, stall, enthrall, maul. I bet you all know that one. Small, right? Enthrall. Um, and so simply means um, to charm somebody or put a magic spell on them. But they're all said the same way. Note, I am using UK English spellings. If I was using US, then it would be E-N-T-H-R-A-L-L, right? But I'm using UK. So um, if you're watching this, uh, please remember that. And when you write your letters, um, put your setting as UK English, you will find the same English that I'm using today. Right. Privately. Is that a schwa? No, actually it's an i. So, private. It's like an i sound. Climate. Ultimate. Candidate. Right? All of these use a in I as i. So, climate. Ultimate. Candidate. And if you bother to look at phonetic dictionaries, you'll find it. Now we get to father. What a lovely word. Father, arm, harm, charm, alarm. Now, notice alarm has the schwa first and the long sound later. Arm. So arm, harm, charm, alarm. I think you need a bit of a rest. For a minute or two.
Now, I know I stopped for a minute, but this is more for my little friends, my young friends in the audience. They need to have some fun too. So what we're going to do is we're flashing this picture about all the favorite breakfast foods that exist, right? So let's start with enunciating all these lovely names for breakfast foods. And the very first, first one, which is my favorite, is cheese. Cheese. Don't be afraid to enunciate like this. Cheese. Oh, then comes marmalade. Marmalade. That's easy, right? But the next one isn't. Croissant. And you will say, what on earth is croissant? It's a lovely French bread, right? We love it. And it's full of butter, so it's not good for you, but never mind. All right, so croissant, and next to it is something really good, orange juice. Next to it is donut and hot coffee, right? Ooh, tomatoes, right next to it. And then for the non-vegetarians in this audience, we have sausages and a giant ham, good Lord. Who wants to eat a ham that big? Then comes yogurt, yogurt. And then there's another cup of coffee and something called a breakfast burrito. It's that nice little roll right there. And next to it is a cereal. Now that cereal looks a bit like corn. Well, I don't know what it is, but it's a cereal. And just below it are those lovely, lovely, yummy fried eggs, sunny side up, which means the yolks are nice and big on top. Next to it is something which is really good to you, for you, and that is porridge. Can you see it in that red bowl with a spoon? Porridge. You might call it dalia or various other things, oats, but it's a porridge. And next to it, yummy muffins. I think they look like chocolate chip muffins. And next to that are waffles. And two strips of bacon. And next to that is a bagel. And it's got cheese in between, isn't that lovely? And a lovely loaf of bread and hopefully um, a standard loaf which could be toasted next to that. So all of these are great breakfast foods and I hope that it's helped you identify them and also say them in the correct way. What were the difficult ones? Yogurt, croissant, pancakes on top, sausages, waffles, not waffles, W -w -w waffles, bagels, all right? Now, all of these are very, very prized around the world. Okay, I hope you had fun. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to go on to some tricky letter combinations. Remember I talked to you about diphthongs, right? Diphthongs being vowel glides like Ow, oi, etc. Can you see my mouth? Now we're going to do a letter combination with called, well, it could be ow or something else, but it is O U G H. Now we're going to go into another poem. And what you have to do is read that sentence on the board. Can you read it? I'm not reading it. You're reading it. Okay, when you're reading it carefully in your head, there's going to be a pop-up which comes up. I hope you've been doing that for the other polls as well. But the answers to this question are going to pop up on your screen, perhaps in your comments box or somewhere else. But the question is this, how many different ways is O-U-G-H pronounced in this sentence? Now, you can see there's so many words. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven words. But are there seven pronunciations for it? Different pronunciations? Or is it common? I leave that to you. But now you have to answer it on this poll and it's being counted down. Please remember, I've got it right here and I'm actually looking at the options. Is it four, five, six or seven? Different ways of pronouncing O-U-G-H. Hmm, bit of a problem, isn't it? Okay, so let's do it together. Come on. He gave the bow a thorough shaking as the oranges he needed for his cough were not enough, though he had thought it through. I hope you realize they're all different. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways, all right, to pronounce O-U-G-H. And I bet that was a nasty shock for some of you because um, people sometimes just don't know and you can't blame them. How do you know? Bow rhymes with plow, ow. So O-U-G-H is ow. Thorough. It's not thorough, as Americans would say it. It's thorough. Rhymes with borough, which is a geographical location inside a county in England. And that's a schwa. Remember, we talked about schwa earlier on. Next is cough, not cuff. It's cough, and it rhymes with trough, which is where well, animals drink or eat, right? Then you have enough, enough, no more, right? And it rhymes with rough. Then you have though, which rhymes with dough. And then thought, which, which rhymes with bought or caught. Well, the caught is spelled differently. So that's an ought. And finally, you have through. And honestly, I could only think of broom, which is spelled the same way. And what is broom? Nothing but a carriage. All right. People used to ride in those carriages. They were called broom. So let's just say that again. Bow, plow. Please notice my mouth. Bara, thara or thara, bara whatever. Cough, trough. Enough, rough. Though, dough. Thought, bought. Through, broom. All right, or broom as it might be buried. Right, so now we've got through that very troublesome diphthong and now we're going to go on to something a little more difficult. And when do you use a sounded R and when do you stay silent? R is a big problem, causes the endless torture. So let's look at when R is actually sounded. Okay. When I say sounded, it means you can hear R, right? When it's a beginning sound, you can say it, right? So as a beginning sound, let's try it. Run, uh, see that? Red, rotten. And then let's not forget the W's, yeah? Right, wrong. All of these are sounded. Run, red, rotten, right, wrong. Everyone says, Ms. Matu, what are the rules? Well, here you are, I'm giving you the rules. Beginning sounds are sounded for R. Then, when it immediately follows a consonant. Let's look at that. Bread, remember what's a consonant? B is a, a consonant. From, green, prize, all of these are sounded. What about in the middle syllable? 
like current, er, remember? Garage, er, garage. Worry, worry, very. All of these, when they're there in the second syllable, you pronounce them. So, when are they silent? When you are following a long vowel, car, you don't say car. Farm, you don't say farm. You don't say bark. The dog was barking. No, the dog was barking. Pretend the R is not there. Harm, garden, warden, warm, normal, more. Oh yeah, the more is very funny because somebody said um, he'd gone to more or what did they say? They said more for shopping. And I just couldn't understand what they were talking about because to me, more is a peacock in Hindi. And then I suddenly realized they were talking about more. So do say it right in future, more, park. This is an absolute solid rule. When it's after a long vowel, you've got to remember all this because I'm going to be testing you on this after that, all right? What makes it easier is um, another rule, which is, words ending with er or or like master will we be saying master no you won't you'll be saying master farmer mother water father doctor all of these have er or or at the end and that r is silent forget it's there except when you're writing it all right so there you go, that's the rule. And now we're going to have our next poll. Okay, so you're going to see four sentences on the board, okay? Those four sentences have plenty of R's. This is where you need your little notebook. You have to decide whether those R's are silent or not. And I'm gonna be looking here at your poll, all right? Hmm. You have to pull out only the sounded R's. How many of them are there? And I'm not going to say them. You have to say them following the rules I just taught you. Okay? Look at those four sentences. Count the number of sounded R's. It can be done. My friends have just done it. And what's more, they got it right too. I'm sure you will. What were the rules again? When does it get sounded after a consonant? When it starts a word? Hmm. Do you remember? If it's on the second syllable, starts the second syllable. Those are sounded R's. All right, how are we getting on? We just have a few more seconds. Tick, tick, tick. Just a few more seconds. Hmm. I think that should be enough. All right, let's say it together. And you can count and then check whether you actually got this right in the poll or not. Now, the poll gave you lots and lots of um, very obvious answers, all right? 8, 10, 12, 14, I wonder what you wrote. Let's see which one's right. The bird drank water from the trough in the garden. That's how many? How many is that? Three, right? Drank from trough. There you go. Drank from trough. Now, what's the next one? Orange, orange, drink, bitter, no way. That's two more. So three and two. Baker baked some loaves of bread, put them in the truck, in the garage. Three there. And finally, the carpenter drilled a hole in the wrong board. So there's two more. So three, two, three, two. All told, 10. 
Hope you got the maths right. So yes, there were 10. I wonder how you did. Hmm. I'll be able to check that. All right. Now, there's lots more to be done and I don't know if we've got time. Hmm. Let's look at what I warmed you up with. Right. I warmed you up with S and Z sound. Let's see if you remember them. What is an S sound and which one is a Z sound? And I mean sound, not spelling. All right. So let's look at this um, paragraph. Okay. How many Z sounds are there? I want you to say them in your, in your home. And it starts with a Zambian. We know the difference between s and z. Try it out. And here's your poll coming up. Yep, I'm looking at it now. How many z sounds are there? Four, five, seven, or nine? Now I'm going to keep my mouth absolutely quiet as you say them for yourselves. Hmm. I'm going to say it. Let's see if you catch it. A Zambian came to see us in December. Us in December. When he visited, we organized an excursion to the zoo to spend some time with him and his niece. We swat spotted swamp deer, several chips, snakes, and some zebra. Now, I hope you don't say things like him and his knees, because if you say knees, I'm gonna think we mean K-N-E-E-S, which is a part of your body, and it's not your niece. So, did you get that? How many were there? Anybody in my room? Anyone? I'm waiting for answers. All right, let's do it again. Zambian came to see us in December when he visited, that's two, organized, that's three, zoo. Spent some time with him and his niece. We spotted swamp deer, several chips, and some zebra. Have I missed something? Did we, for example, miss his? Yes, we did. So that makes it seven. All right, we've got it. His niece. And all right, when we actually, um, uh, when we actually speak English, we've learned how to get new sounds from just those 26 letters. So then you have something called a digraph, like CH, all right? We teach it quite rightly as a digraph, which means you put C and an H together and you get CH. That's how we teach it to our children. Not so simple, is it? Look at the sentence on the screen. What are the sounds for CH here? The machine, so SH, why on earth didn't they just put SH? But they didn't. Reeked, chaos, k, CH again. In the church. Well, this is the only time they've actually spelt it the way it's meant to be said church. But the same CH has been used in different ways, hasn't it? So I think non English speakers are having a hard time. All right? Okay, so let's look at what shall we do next? I remember telling you, we would be looking at homophones, all right? Phones, homophones. And I'm going to give you a list, okay? It's on the board. What you have to do is this, figure it out. And that is what I am going to tell you. 
how many pairs are actually homophones. Remember, homophones sound the same. So you have to say them out loud. How many pairs are the same? And your poll will be popping up. All seven, six, five, four. How many are actually homophones out of the seven? I'm giving you just 30 seconds. This is fast. Hmm. Okay. Let's say it together and see whether you were right. C, C, that's a homophone. Court, court. I wonder how many of you said court and court and then decided it was not a homophone. You're wrong. It is a homophone. Court, court. Sword, sword. That's a nasty one. A lot of people say sword. That's wrong. I hope you remember this in future. It's sword, sword. Pull, aha, pool. So that's not a homophonic pair. Throne, throne. That is flu, flu. How many of you said flu, flu and decided this was not a homophonic pair? Well, you're wrong. It is. It's just flu, flu. And nose, nose. All the same. So there's just one pair that isn't a homophonic pair. And that is pull, pull. I wonder how many of you got wrote down six in your poll? I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> now, I'm going to confuse you further. And hopefully you'll get some clarity after this. We're going to homographs. And they get really challenging. And I feel very sorry for people who actually have to do this. Um, there are six words in this next sentence. It's up there now. Yes, look at it. How many of those words rhyme with now? They are spelt with a B-O-W in the sentence. How many rhyme with now? Read aloud, read aloud. And according to my list, your poll says there are five which rhyme with now, four, three, two. Good heavens. One, two, three, four, five, six B O W words. Okay, here we go. The female archer with a bow in her hair took a bow and accepted the trophy, which was a golden bow and arrow. And then she went to sit in the bow of the boat. There she enjoyed a bowl of soup and she gave some to her dog who barked, bow wow. All right. Did you count how many owls there were? Took a bow, sat in the bow of the boat, and the dog went bow wow. So that's how many? Three. I hope, I really hope, nobody said a bowel of soup. Because you all know that bowel has a very nasty meaning, and it's actually spelled B-O-W-E-L. And that should give you the clue that you must never, ever get this pronunciation mixed up. And some of you are going to say, what's the bow of the boat? The bow of the boat is the absolute front of the boat. So, you know, nautical terms are like that. Bow of the boat, stern of the boat, port and starboard. You know, you can't help it. The Navy is different. But the bow of the boat, remember, rhymes with now. Just like, take a bow when you've done something really good. Okay, now we're nearing the end of our session. And I decided that we're just going to do difficult words, just difficult words. These words have actually been picked up by a team of people who said, 
Ms. Matu, how on earth is one supposed to say this? All right, so this is where you need to have your ears really peeled, all right? Just like you have your eyes peeled. Listen with your ears, okay. Starting now, my first list, okay. Albeit, just a fancy way of saying although. So if you remember although, you remember albeit. Almond, it's not almond, almond. Anemone, most people say anemone, it's not. It's anemone and it's a plant of the buttercup family. Then you have athlete, athlete. Antarctic, Antarctic. Notice I'm saying the seas very clearly. Most people say Antarctic. I'm, um, there was an Antarctic expedition. No, Antarctic. Oh, that's a long one. Archipelago. What is an archipelago? It's a, a group of islands. For example, let's look at Indonesia, where I lived for many years. It had, it was an archipelago, over 7,000 islands. All right? Archipelago. And then you have bouquet. French word entered into English. Bouquet. Brewery. Brewery, where they might make beer for all you know. Boy. Boy. Which is nothing but a float, which, you know, you can see boys in the sea. They're marking something, probably, and they bob about, they float. Now is a tough one. It's not buddy, it's berry. So in your mind, think of strawberries and any kind of berry which might help you remember. A lot of word pictures help you remember. So when I look at B-U-R-Y, I actually think of a berry. Right, next, cash. It's not cachet, which has a different meaning. Cash. Ooh, um, he found a cache of, tre of, of treasure, of silver, anything that's in a hiding place. It's a cache. Mm, people who like, well, who are into computers will use cache in a different way for storage. That was the cache of the machine. Then you have chaos, which I already mentioned earlier, all right? chaos and now we come to oh that's um, we use that we've been using it since the feminist movement started chauvinism chauvinism not chauvinism but chauvinism longish chauvinism and it means well any blind or aggressive belief in a cause all right that's what chauvinism means. I hope you've got that. Do I need to say it again? I could if you insist later. Now let's look at the next slide, which is more words. Oh, more words from foreign languages. A coup. My gosh, what a coup. Which means, you don't say coup, please. Coup means what a master stroke fantastic thing all right what a coup and if you use it uh, with d'etat which means um, the violent overthrow of a government so there was a coup d'etat and the state from a democracy became a military dictatorship i hope you got that so coup and then you have debris which is left behind when something breaks up so let's imagine a ghastly uh, um, a copter crash or a plane crash. There'll be a lot of debris left behind, broken up bits. Um, debut, all right? So in the very first appearance on screen, a new actor makes a debut. Now, that nasty word next to it, dengue, all right? It can be dengue, it can be dengue, but it is not, is dengue, even if it's spelled that way. So remember, dengue is fine, dengue is fine, dengue is not. And that's a nasty illness anyway. Then we have elite. 
the best of the best, the cream of the cream, elite. Now, faux pas, when you make a massive blunder, all right? Oh my God, what a faux pas. Um, he ignored the chief guest in the crowd. What a faux pas. Faux pas. Faux also means fake. So maybe you don't like wearing leather. So you will then wear faux leather. Faux. Not forks. Faux. All right. Now, February. And that's such a simple word. But is it easy to pronounce? No. February. Ruri, Ruri, twice. Then you have this word which means the lobby, right? Fancy way of saying lobby is foyer. Foyer, not foyer. Foyer. And then you have genre, which has come into English extensively. Genre, which you know what it means. It means class, category. All right. And then you have this awful word, gauge. How are you supposed to know? It's not gorge. It's written as gorge, but it's actually gauge. Gauge could be a verb, which means estimate or judge, or it can be a device. All of them are gauge. And then heinous, which you use for the worst of the worst acts, a heinous crime for which he was hanged. Now you may say heinous, but you don't say heir for this one. You say heir, somebody who succeeds a position after perhaps his father dies or somebody, the heir to the throne. The British throne is Prince Charles, for example. Then you have herb, which is an aromatic plant. But if you're American, you'll say herb. But if you're British, you'll say herb. And then you have infamous, infamous. It's the opposite of famous, all right? Everybody says, well, it should mean famous as well because it's so, uh, you know, infamous. So, but it's not, it's the opposite. Infamous means known for all the wrong things. And now the last one, which is ingenuity, which means genius or somebody who's very clever, all right? Ingenuity, not ingenuity is ingenuity. How many, gosh, how many syllables is that? in -ge -nu -e -t, Five. Right? And finally, a very difficult one. Honestly, itinerary. Not itinerary. Itinerary. Try it again. Itinerary. Which means the plan for a journey. All right? Now, I really don't know where to stop because this is going to go on forever. Um, and I'm going to check. Perhaps I should pause now and give you a chance to have your questions coming up. I hope you've got any number of words or questions about the English language, hopefully pronunciation, which I can help you with. So I'm right here for your questions. I'm getting questions coming in, but before we continue with the Q&A, please remember to like this video and uh, press the bell icon to subscribe to our channel. That way you get notified before our next capsule, whether it's on pronunciation or usage or bits of grammar, uh, common mistakes, there are a whole lot more coming up. Right, first question. Um, well, I've got one here. Uh, it says, Miss Matu, what is a trough? What is a trough? Well, um, a trough is a long, thin kind of um, receptacle or a box. It, it's open and animals put their faces into it and either eat their feed or drink. 
one way or the other. All right? So it's for animals, food, and drink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the next one I'm getting is, are you sure about the S-W-O-R-D pronunciation? I've heard it pronounced differently. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, but I am sure about the way it's pronounced. I know you're saying that um, you've heard it as sword. Everyone says sword because it's written sword. But honestly, um, it is sword. Just like the other bear, the word bear, sword. So please um, persevere. Okay, some new words coming up. How do you pronounce niche? Okay, N-I-C-H-E. That gives a lot of people problems. A niche. That's, it's another French word. Remember I talked about the way French has completely um, infiltrated English. Well, what does niche mean? It means um, a suitable spot. Right? It can, in architecture, it also means uh, something that's sort of set back a little bit. Um, that's all I can say. Right. But, but, you know, he found his niche in life. He loved drawing, so he became a cartoonist. Right. Um, what's the next question? Okay. <laughs> How do you spell S-U-I-T-E? S-U-I-T-E. Um, that's not suit. Please don't call it suit. It's sweet. Rhymes with what you love eating, all that sugary stuff. Sweet. Same thing, same pronunciation, but different meaning. So what is a sweet? Um, come on, I bet you know. It's just nothing but connected rooms. So you pay extra for a suite in a hotel because you probably have a bedroom and a sitting room and, you know, a little study. So you pay extra for a suite of rooms, connected rooms. Through. Um, well, that's another question I've got. What does through really mean? Is it through that you want to know or thorough? If it's through... It means going through something. All right, the car drove through a tunnel. Did you get that? The car drove through a tunnel. And if you're asking about thorough, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure. If it's thorough, it means somebody who is very careful about the way they do things. Employers love thorough people in their teams because they know they're not going to be careless and slipshod. They're going to be very detail-oriented and do their work properly. It's good to be thorough, in other words, right? Okay. Um, um, monk. Monk. M-O-N-K. Monk. M-O-N-K. Everybody says monk. In fact, somebody asked me if, I, if I'd gone to monk restaurant and I said no and then I realized they meant monk. A monk is a holy man, right? Uh, and it's monkey. So that should help you remember, monkey, monk. But unfortunately, um, it's donkey. It's not donkey. So as I said, this is a contradictory language. But what next? Okay, somebody asked me about L-I-N-G-E-R-I-E. Lingerie. I'm sorry. I can't help that. It's a French word. <laughs> Lingerie. Lingerie. In, in, in British English, we, if we use the French word as lingerie. Americans say lingerie. I don't know why, because it's I-E. But it is lingerie. Right. Now somebody's asked me for paradigm. P A R A D I G M. Paradigm. They say stuff like that on news. There was a paradigm shift, etc., etc. 
So what does paradigm really mean? A paradigm is like a, a model or a, a framework, okay? Paradigm is a model or a, a framework. Um, so uh, when there's a paradigm shift, it means you're changing something, the whole model, all right? Fine. So let's look at the next question I'm getting, and that is, oh, that's cute, P-I-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z is it pizza or is it pizza? Now, sad to say it's pizza. So whoever's been saying pizza till now, it better change. It's an Italian word, pizza, all right? And it's a pie, an Italian pie called pizza. Now um, we have, oh yes, mischievous. It's not mischievous, it's mischievous, which means naughty, all right? Mischievous. And if you look at the spelling carefully, I don't even know why anyone says mischievous, mischievous because there's no V-I, it's V-O-U-S. So mischievous. Um, and then you have, or oh, what do you have? All right, mauve, M-A-U-V-E, mauve, not mauve, mauve, which is a lovely subtle color, um, like a violet or a lavender, not quite a purple. So, oh yeah, subtle. That's another one. It's it's written subtle, S-U-B-T-L-E, but it's subtle, subtle. Um, how do I pronounce these three words? It's kangaroo, not kangaroo. Kangaroo. Remember the second A is like a schwa that I talked about earlier. Kangaroo. Uh, next is poem. Um, I've heard it being pronounced poem. I was told to pronounce it poem in India. And it's not exactly poem. There is a slight lag. So it's not poem, but it is a longer sound, poem. All right? And cucumber. Why should that be difficult? Cucumber. And boulangerie, boulangerie, which is a store which could sell different kinds of bread, etc. So boulangerie. Any other questions? I'm still waiting. Anything else? All right then. Thank you for being such patient listeners. And I, I'm going to switch off now. The last word should actually be um, the student of a month. We have a young man called Behan Roy, and he was a judge, the student of the month, and he has a few words to say. So it's bye from us. Please listen to Behan. Um, he deserves a listen because he's done a great job, and he'll probably introduce you to what he's done in the program. So from us now, bye. Watch Behan. My name is Vihan. I had a very interesting journey with a dog. I learned a lot of new skills. I am very happy that now I am an alumnus of a doll. With this program, my interview was recorded. I even wrote the novel. I am the author of the book, The Mysterious Crash of a Flight, Wheel 279. We recorded my blog, which went on YouTube, followed by the startup studio where I learned about problem-solving skills and introduced my startup idea on how to recycle and upcycle plastic waste. I named my initiative eco Bricks. We used to do many fun activities in the class and a learn in a process. This all somewhere helped me with my personality development skill. And now I have my very own global portfolio. I shared it with my friends and family and I would recommend this experience for all kids.